What is up, RC enthusiasts? We're back here again today to complete the build of this guy right here, the C24KM. Now, in the beginning, I said I was going to use a version 3 ESC receiver combo from WPL. This one is actually the version 2. I didn't realize that I already used all my version 3, so I just robbed a version 2 from one of my other trucks I don't run as often. And that's what I'm going to use to install into this one. As you can tell, I have waterproofed this one. Got black plastic dip. They already did waterproof it a little bit or made it a little water resistant. But I decided to go a little bit more all out to dunk this thing completely in water. Now if you see all my connections right here, they are pretty random. They're already connected. But they're pretty simple. You can see the speakers connected right here. Over here you have your motor connection. Next is going to be your on off switch. And the last one on here is going to be your battery. And over here is where you're going to put your servo. A winch if you have one and your two speed are all going to go on right here now you do get instruction manuals with these i do believe that this version 2 is not available anymore so the version 3 is where you're going to get a manual for and you're probably going to receive a version 3 which is a little bit better than this one this one isn't that bad either but yeah so if you get that one it doesn't come with these connections but on wpl slash rc.com you can go ahead and purchase just these connectors right here so you don't have to do any soldering it just makes everything plug and play and, you know, they should just include it in this kit one day, hopefully, so you don't have to buy it separate. Because I think when you buy stuff like this, it would be much simpler if everything just came like this. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get into this guy right here. And we'll set it up using this transmitter right here. I'm going to show you how I set up the two-speed, how I set up the steering, and everything so it's ready and tuned to hit the trails. Let's go ahead and let's get this ready to go. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this body is just on top of this right now, just to keep it all together. Nothing's attached. As you can see right here, we still have to put our servo in there. And here's one trick to the servo, because some of these kits don't come with a servo mount to actually mount the servo on here and keep it nice and snug in here. So I'll show you what I've been doing and what most people have been doing with these things once they figured that they could use this for that. Same bag that you get your servo in, you're going to find your servo horns and stuff. You're going to want to grab the straight servo horn right here. You're going to need that to mount your servo on. So what I do here is a servo. What I like to do with these too is I open them up and put plastic dip on the boards in here just to get them waterproof. But I'm not going to do that for this video, but I have older videos where I mention that I do that to these and I even show one of them apart. To show you what it looks like inside once I plastic dip them. But yeah, this servo just goes in here, like so. And it kind of press fits in that area right there. And you're just going to use this servo horn to go from that hole to that hole, like so, as your servo mount. And I just use these two screws right here that come in the bag too. So there you go. Once I'm done, that's what it looks like right there. And now that servo secured, it's not going to go anywhere. Next, I'm going to solder the wire onto this for the motor terminal. Now, if you notice on here, there's a red dot. I'm not sure if I'm showing it right there in the video, but there's, there's a red dot on the motor on one side. That usually means that's a positive. Not always the case, but usually does mean it's positive. Don't worry. Once you solder this on, if you do end up finding out that you soldered it on reverse, you can go ahead and take the other end of this and you could pull it out of its housing and switch the wires around and put it back on. Or you can switch it around on the ESC by turning around the cable that plugs into the ESC. That way you will get a reverse spinning of your motor and it'll spin the proper way. But usually this works. So let's go ahead. I'll show you what it looks like once I get that soldered on there. All right, there you go. We have it soldered on there. Red to the red dot, and black to the black. Next, let's get our EC receiver combo, because we want to try everything out now. So we're going to plug that in, motor wire to the motor. I'm going to be using a 650mAh 2-cell lithium ion to power this. Let's plug it in. Plug the servo in. Hopefully, we're plugging it into the right one. There you go. So, servo is working. So, the last plug down there is the servo 
plug. Make the sound. So you can see, when I go forward, it goes reverse. So I do have to switch the motor lead around. So that's the problem with soldering the red to the red. Sometimes it still doesn't put it in the right way. So what I do from here is I normally disconnect it from in here. But on this ESC receiver combo, it looks like I soldered that on there. So I'd have to change it from here. So all I'd have to do here is pull this connection back out. And these two little tabs right there, just push that in with a small little pin or a small little Allen key. Pull them out and switch them around. There you go, now that I switched it around, truck goes the right way. Now at this point, we're going to get our steering, I mean our shifting servo plugged in to this ESC receiver combo. Now I don't remember which one it is, I don't know if it's the one right by the servo or not, but I'll go ahead and plug it into that one first and see if that's right. Oh, it shifted right there as soon as I did that. Let me see, shift. Yep. That's the right one. So, let me see if I can get a close up of this. So, you see right there on the shift servo, you can kind of see past that link that the shift servo is kind of not installed properly. You want that to be straight up and down so that when it's engaged, it'll be straight 90 that way, which it's not right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and take that screw off right there and fix that. Well, there you go. Hopefully, I can show you right now when I engage that. There you go. Went straight to low gear. All right, so that's done. You got your shifting nice and tuned. Next, steering is going to be your next thing to tune. This is the arm I use right here for the steering. And then you have your little black screw right here to hold your servo horn onto the servo. So let's go ahead and let's get that installed. Now on here, you're going to want to set the trim to this as centered as possible. So like that straight that way it looks like it's going to be as centered as you can get that servo and you're just going to put this arm straight up and down well actually not straight up and down you're going to kind of want it cock a little bit to one side just a little bit that one's a little too much go one notch back right about there almost should be good enough. So once you get that where you want it, get this black screw to hold on that servo horn on there. It's not that hard to squeeze through right here, this plastic piece. There you go. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's in there. Black screw. Now for this one, I'm going to use one of these fine threaded screws with a lock or that comes with a little nut in the back of it and that's what I'm going to use to hold that on right, it looks like I'm not going to be putting the little nut in the back of it because it actually threaded in there pretty nicely so that's just what I'm going to do is just hold it on there with a screw there you go So there you go, everything assembled, everything working, low range, high gear, sound, boom. Oh. It's a diesel unit, so we're not going to be using the speaker on this one. 
Well, there you go, guys. I'm sorry. I did not have my mic on like I thought I did, so the volume probably got a little low right there while I was explaining how to do all this. But hopefully, you can understand it. I'll try to raise the volume as much as I can for that, but I did not notice that I did not have my mic on, and my mic was actually sitting underneath something, so I'm not sure how well that whole instruction would work right there, but that's pretty much it. This truck is pretty much built. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I stuff everything underneath this. And then we're going to go ahead and put that body on this right here. You're going to see you got it on and off down there. Get it oriented the right way like so. And two screws holds that down. There you go. Screwed down right there. Arranging this in the proper location to have everything reach where it needs to reach. This needs to reach the battery compartment. Everything else can be folded up into here. Just, you know, try to get it as neat as you can. This body right here is what I'm going to use on this chassis. So I'm going to pull this off of here and I'm going to transfer it over to here. All right, so I got the lights installed. It's the very last one right here, which is positive on the end, negative on the inside of the board. And that's for the lights. So now that I tested that, it's time to button everything up. I'm going to get all this assembly underneath this. All you got to do is just make sure to Tuck up all the wires nicely. That goes there, and that goes there, and there's two holes that line up up here. Those two. Same screws that you've been assembling the whole kit with so far. And don't forget when you're doing this, you want the LED lights to be pointing out the front like so. And you want your lead for your battery to be coming out the back. Alright, now that I got that mounted up on there, it's time to get the front on there. Now the fronts on the red one and the white one are pretty much the same. You're just going to have the mounting points right here that it's going to have to go underneath here. These mounting points go underneath here. This one just has a bumper, but it's the same thing. Those mounting points go underneath here. You're going to want to put your lights in the light buckets. Make sure not to pull too hard on the wires because you don't have that much room to work in here. You don't want to yank any of these and break them. Then you're going to have to resolder wires to get things to work. All right, I got that in there. Now just slide that under to those two mounts and up like so. And once you have it under there, you're going to want to line it up to the bumper. And there's going to be two holes on the body that it has to line up to right there. So I'm not sure if you can see that. There's two holes down here that the body needs to line up to and you screw the same screws in there that you've been using so far and same with these two screws right here. All right, now we got the front cab on. We got those four screws, one, two, and three, and four, all installed on there. Now it's time to put the back cab on. It's pretty simple. You just slide it on under there. And make sure to grab your power wire right here. If you wanna put that over, you wanna put this under there. And slide it in. You gotta make sure you got everything lined up right. There you go, both tabs right there on the outside. So you can see those tabs right there. And you gotta screw it into those holes. And the very back right here, you have one spot to screw the bed in. So right there. Alright, guys, I got the cab screwed in there. I didn't screw these parts in yet because it's kind of hard to get it in there, but. I'll do that off camera. I got the back half screwed in, so the whole thing is together right now. And the battery compartment back here with your lead back here for your battery. And that's pretty much it. This truck is assembled. Let's put a battery in it and let's see this thing in action. By the way, this is the one that tumbled all the way down that one video when it was an RTR form. So it deserves a KM underbody after what it went through for my white Hilux. There you go. Turn on the controller, press bind, and it's on. Low gear.
Thing climbs pretty well, guys. Check it out. And there you go. That's a stock build of a C24KM right there. Obviously, I didn't use the body that it was supposed to have on there, which is this one. Because that's going to a friend. So there you go. You got this right here. I'm going to keep the white camper shell. Just to complete the all white look on this thing. And there you go. Get myself some side steps on here. I'm going to put a 3D printed side step on there and take her out on the trails. I'm not sure if I'll have the side step on there yet by the time I do that. But yeah, that's the next video for this one, guys. It's going to be taking this on the trails and having a blast with it. So let's see what this thing can do on the hill climb. Well, yeah, guys, for now, thanks for watching. I hope that helped you guys assemble your C24KMs or any of your C24s. They all pretty much go together just like this. And if you have a ready to run, well, now you know how it looks like underneath and you can take it apart and do some mods like this right here. All right, guys, thanks for watching as always. And for now, go out there and have some fun and run that RC.